what I will be doing in this video is to give you a glimpse of how you will go about the financial statements assuming that you are a merchandising business and this is a bit more tedious than the service business because unlike journalizing and service business merchandising businesses have inventory systems we have the periodic inventory system as well as the perpetual inventory system which I'm pretty sure you already mastered and if you're not no problem you can just go back to the, my previous recordings and then start there no? before going here what I will discuss here would just be a preview like a trailer whatever you call it and not really the nitty-gritty of the topics because I will discuss them in a separate video so you can see that this is like a transition video from the journal entries to the financial statements okay so I'll start with the um, income statement if you are a service business I'll just write SB your equation or, or your formula to compute profit kinda goes like this you will get your revenue minus expenses to get your profit or loss profit if revenue is higher or loss if revenue is lower than expense so this is the template that we use whenever we try to compute the net income under service business now how about merchandising business um, for merchandising business it's kind of like the same um, you will also be using expenses you'll also be using revenue but you will just change the context and then you will insert something another kind of expense you will be adding that one but anyways um, for merchandising business you will start with net sales Kasi for service business, it's service revenue. For merchandising business, it should be net sales. So you write net sales and then deduct. So net sales, this is the counterpart of the revenue for service business. Then you will deduct cost of sales. Minus cost of sales. Okay, cost of sales would be the amount of the sale without the markup. And you get, if you get the difference, you will get gross profit or gross loss. Gross profit if net sales is higher than cost of sales. And gross loss if net sales is lower. After getting gross profit or loss, you will then deduct your expenses. So this is where expenses come in to get your profit or loss. Or maybe just write net profit or loss just to differentiate net profit or loss and then here net profit or loss by just looking at this formula you will notice that under merchandising business we deduct two things number one we deduct the cost of sale which is the price without the markup and then the expenses the counterpart of revenue here is to, is the net sales while the counterpart of expense is also the expenses cost of sales is the new thing that's the added that's the insertion that i'm talking about earlier Okay, avoid touching your face. Kate. Anyway, so this is added. And since we're done with service, I will just go ahead and like hex this part and focus the discussion on the the one under merchandising businesses. We'll talk about the line items. Not line items, but the the titles that we have here. And try to discuss them comparing periodic inventory system and then perpetual inventory system. So I'll just write it here so on one side i will write periodic and then on another side i will write perpetual just to differentiate so i'll start with net sales fortunately for net sales the formula is the same on both case and the way to compute it is you get first the gross sales okay you get the gross sales and in your journal entry gross sales is the one where you write the sales this is actually the sales in your journal entry get the gross sales and then deduct SRA sales returns and allowances of course you have that under both systems and then also deduct your sales discount which is also seen in both cases to get 
what we call the net sales okay so this is how we compute the net sales and as i've said earlier the way you compute net sales is the same for both methods so under perpetual you also use the same formula meaning for sales you don't have a problem under both systems they are used so it can be easily computed so we're done with net sales now how about cost of sales so this is where the difference um, comes in because under perpetual if you can still recall your journal entry under perpetual you have a continuous recording of your cost of sales you have the balance of your cost of sales like every time because every time you make a sale you record cost of sales so under perpetual cost of sales can be determined via records or maybe in your t accounts and of course this is different for a periodic system because if you try to look at your journal entries under periodic system never a case will you record cost of sales because to compute cost of sales in the periodic system you have to make use of a formula which i will explain the logic later and i will also explain it so that i don't have to discuss it when i go to the specific statement anyway so how do we compute cost of sales now under periodic? You will need a lot of things. The first thing that you need is the beginning inventory. So you will write MI, which is merchandise inventory, and then I will write the beginning. So this is your merchandise inventory at the beginning of the year. You need that. And then after getting that, you will add your NCP. NCP is net cost of purchases to get your TIGAS. So NCP is net cost of purchases, while uh, TIGAS is total goods available. Uh, sorry, while TIGAS is total goods available for sale. Is there a logic to this one? Of course, there's logic. Yan. Merchandise inventory is what you have on January 1. And net cost of purchases, um, think of this as your purchases during the year. And then if you add both, like what you have January 1 and then what you purchase during the year, you will get total goods available for sale, which makes sense because... Um, what you have in the beginning and what you purchase would be the goods available for sale, of course. Yeah. But now, how do we go about computing the net cost of purchases? You need a lot of things. And I think I will just explain it here so that um, when I talk about the income statement for like the nitty-gritty of the income statement, I can just explain this real quick so I can focus on other things. Okay, so to continue, I was cut. No? Someone called me in Messenger. Anyway, um, to proceed, saan ba ako? <laughs> Okay, to get total goods available for sale, you need to get your merchandise inventory beginning and then add your net cost of purchases. Merchandise inventory in beginning would be your inventory on January 1, assuming you are using calendar year. And then net cost of purchases, take off this as your purchases during the year. So if you get your beginning inventory plus your purchases during the year, that's your total goods available for sale. So this makes sense. But now how do we compute net cost of purchases? To compute net cost of purchases under periodic system, you need the following. You need the, so I'll just write an arrow. Maybe I'll use a different color. Like green. Yeah. Uh, what, what green? Maybe white. To compute net cost of purchases, first you need the gross purchases. This is also the purchase in your journal entry. And then deduct purchase returns and allowances. And deduct purchase discount after deducting these two you will get what we call net purchases okay after getting net purchases you will add here freight in to get the ncp the net cost of purchases okay so this is how we compute the net cost of purchases inside this net cost of purchases would be your purchases account titles no um, gross purchases, purchase returns and allowances, purchase discount, and then add the freight in. Freight in is not an expense, no? it's part of the cost of sales. While freight out, which I will discuss later, is part of the expenses. So this is how we compute net cost of purchases. You need the three purchase, purchase, purchase returns and allowances, purchase discount, and then you also need freight in. Freight in is the account title that we use whenever you are paying the transpo and then you are the buyer. So let me return to my old um, color. 
So after getting total goods available for sale, you need to deduct your ending inventory. And again, for periodic, ending inventory is determined via physical count. I think I mentioned that in a separate video. But for periodic, you determine the ending inventory through physical count because you don't have it in your records. Unlike the perpetual system where you get to really monitor every time your record merchandise inventory. Because in the periodic, we are using nominal accounts, not real accounts no? in our transaction. Get the gas and then reduce it by your merchandise inventory end to get your cost of sales. So this is how we compute the cost of sales. Get your total goods available for sale. Sorry. Get your total goods available for sale and then deduct the merchandise inventory end or your merchandise inventory at the end of the year. And again, for periodic system, I've been reiterating that this is determined via physical count. But what's the logic? Let's say you're, you're selling uh, like watch. On January 1, let's say you have two. That's your merchandise inventory beginning. And then you purchase during the year three more, um, three more, sorry, watch. So what's your total goods available for sale? For the year, you have five watch available. And then, come December 31, you return to your warehouse. Let's say warehouse yun. You return to the warehouse and then you found that you uh, only have two more watches to be sold. So what would be the implication? If you have five originally, and then after you returned on January 31, you are left with two, the assumption is you were able to sell three. So that is your cost of sales. Your tigas is five reduce it by the number of inventory that you have two so the assumption is you're able to sell three of the watches for the year so that's that's the logic now for this one hopefully that help you not to you know memorize the formula because it's really just logic so that's for the cost of sales again for periodic we are using a formula but for perpetual you have it in your records because you get to record cost of sales from time to time every time you make a sale there's an entry with cost of sales and then of course you will be getting the difference between your net sales and cost of sales to get your gross profit or gross loss and after that you will deduct your expenses to get your net profit or <laughs> sorry to determine your net profit or lost for the expenses everything with expense except for the obvious ones except your prepaid expense because that's an an asset and maybe your accrued expense because that's a liability anything with expense except these two at least for for basics no? and then you have to take note that freight out This is the account title that we use whenever you are paying the transpo and you're the seller because freight out is also called delivery expense. And just to, to remind you, freight in is in the cost of sales while freight out is in the expenses. So this is for periodic. Now how about for perpetual? It's the same. Same lang. Same lang yan. So meaning, not much difference when we talk about expenses and net sales. The only difference will be in the cost of sales. No? Because in the perpetual again, you get to monitor it like on a transaction basis. Every time you transact, you get your inventory updated. Well, if it is inventory related. Huh? And then for periodic, you make use of the account title. And then from those account titles, you can compute your cost of sales as provided in the formula earlier. No? You get your beginning, net cost of purchases to get your tigas, minus ending inventory to get cost of sales. So you, you will be doing a lot. And yeah, so this is this what makes merchandising business more complicated than service because per service, it's just revenue and expense, revenue and expense. But for this one, revenue, expense, and then you also have your cost, which is kind of difficult, especially if you are doing periodic because you will be computing whatever method you use periodic or perpetual given a same set of questions you will be getting the same amount of net income if you're computing for net income regardless of methods so this is just 
really you, know, you selecting how you want to record it do you want to record it this way or you want to record that way to determine what methods to use i believe there is a separate video like discussing uh, when do you use periodic when do you use perpetual you may want to check that okay, so we're done with the income statement for statement of equity it's the same so i don't think i need to talk about the equity statement so i'll proceed to the balance sheet again now so for balance sheet um, it's the same for service and merchandising except for the inventory account because normally inventory um, is carried by merchandising businesses because they are engaged in buying and selling unlike service okay so normally in service you don't have inventory maybe you have supplies but not inventories because inventory um, you will be keeping this one with the intention to resell it so if you're in merchandising business your main revenue producing activity would be the trading process okay so of course you will have inventory for service not necessarily you, know, you may not have inventory but and normally don't have inventory supplies yes but inventory most likely not and what i will be doing here is discuss inventory in like a timeline so you have your inventory beginning so meaning this is your inventory as of um, january 1 then you have the changes meaning the changes that will happen to your inventory during the year okay so changes during the year that's the changes and then at one point again your your ending inventory so i will explain this one um differentiating the different system we have the periodic again and then the perpetual okay for beginning inventory um, it is given under both cases so i just write a check here check check how about for the changes for the perpetual you always have inventory but for periodic you don't i think you kind of agree with this one especially if you mastered the journal entry in the perpetual every time we do a transaction you record inventory but for periodic instead of recording inventory you are using the i am writing an x because instead of using inventory you are using the new account titles new 80s new account titles purchases yeah, purchase returns instead of inventory and for the end i place a check here because you can really determine the inventory at that point for periodic as i mentioned earlier this is determined through physical count meaning you will count it to determine the ending inventory for perpetual you can do per physical counting as well but you can just refer to your records no? you can just refer to your records so i believe this was discussed i'm not sure in a separate video but anyway just to recap no for for the beginning inventory what you have at the beginning of the year will just be a given under both methods like you will have inventory as of beginning but during the year for the changes for perpetual you, you get to monitor the inventory as depicted by your entries while for periodic you don't get to monitor because instead of using inventory you are using the new account titles mga purchases purchase returns blah 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 and for the end you have the inventory for periodic through physical counting and then for perpetual you can do physical counting but you can just refer to your records and normally in an ideal setting the one you computed through physical counting and the one you have in the record should be the same and that's it no for for this discussion hopefully I was able to set a good transition from the journal entry to the financial statements later. In the next recording, I will talk about again the income statement for merchandising businesses, but I will be including like computations for the notes. So it's much more in depth than this one because my intention here is just to give you an overview. Um, although I already gave you the formula for cost of sales. But maybe I'll just repeat this again once I discuss in the specific statement. So I'm just giving it here so at least you have an idea. And I don't need to explain the logic for that one once I go there. So that's it. No? Di na talaga.